everyone. I want to stop by today because I want to show you a really quick, helpful tip uh, how to turn any rectangular pattern block that you have uh, in Photoshop into a square pattern block that also repeats seamlessly. So if you have taken my class on Skillshare that will teach you all about how to create perfect repeat patterns in Adobe Illustrator and create them quickly and easily, you will end up with a perfect repeat seamless pattern block that is a rectangle. Now it is gonna be really big, so it's great. You can always make it smaller without losing any image quality. But what if you wanna upload this rectangular pattern block to a print on demand website or give it to an art licensing partner as a square? And what if they need it to be a different size, but you still need this to be a perfect repeat tile that repeats endlessly and seamlessly? I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So I'm gonna be showing you how to do this in Adobe Photoshop. You can use any software that you're comfortable using as long as whatever software you are using will allow you to duplicate layers and change both your image size and your canvas size. But there are a lot of programs out there that will allow you to do that. You can also follow along with me in other software because the process is going to be the same. Right now, I have this rectangular half drop pattern block that I created in my Skillshare class. And if you were to tile this you know, next to each other on top of, behind, you know, or excuse me, below, above, wherever, it would repeat endlessly. So it would be a perfect pattern block, but it's really big and it's also a rectangle. So the first thing that you want to do is you're gonna want to duplicate the layer that you are on. So this only has one layer. If you are not currently working with one layer, but if you don't have everything as your pattern block on one layer, the most important thing you wanna start with is you want to merge everything onto one layer. You want everything all together. But once you have that done, what we're gonna wanna do is duplicate the layer that we have. And we're also going to do it by changing not the image size, but the canvas size. So if you don't see your layers panel, what you wanna do is go up to your Photoshop menu and where it says window here, it's right next to help, just click on that and then drop down to where it says layers. Now mine has a check mark next to it because I already have my layers panel open. But if you have that check mark there and you're not seeing your layers panel, that's okay. You can always do this, click on layers and then it will hide it and then just go back up to window and then drop down to layers. And then it should show up somewhere on your screen. So now that I have my layers panel open, we are going to want to adjust the canvas size. That is the first step. So all we have to do is go up to the menu here at the very top for Photoshop and where it says image, you want to click on that and then you're gonna drop down to where it says canvas size. Do not choose image size, you want to choose canvas size. So click on that and now we're gonna get this little pop-up here and this is telling us what our current canvas size is. Now it's really big, this is the same uh, size of probably the file that you'll be creating if you take my Skillshare class. It's great because you can always make it smaller, but it's also nice and big so you can use it to print, you know, really large things. Right now, we have an image that is half the height of the width. So 4167 pixels times two is 830 uh, excuse me, 8,334 pixels. So the width is twice the height, but what we need is a square. So what we wanna do is I'm going to change my height to be the exact same number as my width. So all I have to do is highlight that 
and then type the same number that I have for my height. And that will make a square because your square is gonna be the same width as it is uh, the height. But you're not done yet. So this is extremely important. So do you see here at the bottom where it says anchor? And then it has this little graphic that has like a dot in the middle and all these arrows here. What we wanna do is we want to anchor our existing layer to the top center so that we will have the bottom half of this image will be empty. So the way you do that is right here at the center top where it says anchor. Do you see this arrow that literally is just pointing straight up? It's in the middle. You want to click on that. And what we're doing is we're making the canvas bigger in height, but we're anchoring the existing layer to the center top of the new canvas size. So then you'll have some blank space at the bottom. So now that we have that, we want to click on OK. And as you can see now, it has anchored the existing layer to the center top of this new canvas size. And then the bottom half is empty. Now, what you are going to want to do is we are going to duplicate this layer. So we basically need to take this layer and make another copy of it. Now, the default Photoshop keyboard shortcut to duplicate a layer is on Mac, it's Command J. On a PC, it's Control J. Um, but you can also go up to your menu at the very top, click on layer, and then click on duplicate layer. That will do the same thing. So all you have to do, and you'll have this little pop up here, you can just click on OK. You don't need to worry about naming it. Um, now we have two layers that are identical, right? But here's the thing, this layer is hidden behind the other layer. We need to move this down. So here's what I am going to do. With only one of your layers selected, just use your uh, copy that you just made. Go over to your move tool in your little uh, quick tools. That is the tool that basically looks like a plus sign with arrows on the ends. Click on that. And then you want to hold down the shift key on your keyboard and then pull down and drag down the new layer. Now watch what happens when I don't hold the shift key. Do you see this? It's all loose and it's going all over the place and you risk losing part of your image and it getting cut off. That's why if you hold the shift key, it's going to move this down directly straight. So it is just going to go straight down without going all over the place. And while you're pulling it down, it eventually is going to snap in place to the end or the edge of that original layer. And you can kind of see some pink guides here. It's giving us a little helpful information saying, yes, that is snapped. So you can let go. And now we have a square, but it is still a perfect repeat pattern tile. But do you guys see this little white hairline here? I'm going to zoom in so you can see it a little bit better. Do you see that? So even though that has snapped to the edge, the second layer has uh, snapped to the edge of the original layer, it is still having a hard time rendering this. And that's like a one pixel hairline. You want to fix that before you do anything with this pattern, because right now it could potentially give you a hairline in your repeat. That's really easy to fix. And also you may notice that like if you zoom in more, I'm just going to deselect this. Do you see how it kind of disappeared? I'm not doing anything other than zooming in and out right now. And then look, when I zoom out, it comes back. When I zoom in, it disappears. That's because Photoshop is trying to render this bitmap image and it's trying to render these pixels. Don't worry about it. But what you want to do is when it snaps in place, zoom into a point where you can see the hairline because we want to make sure we watch that disappear. And then all you have to do is in your layers panel, select your duplicated layer. And I'm just clicking on it with my mouse. And then while you're holding down the shift key, click on the other layer. You should only have two layers. So you're selecting both layers 
And now I have a keyboard shortcut. I believe it's the default for Photoshop. If you hold down on a Mac command, and then at the same time, the letter E for Elizabeth on your keyboard on a PC, it would be control E that would merge these two layers, but you also can go up to your menu here, click on layer. And then if you go down almost to the very bottom here, it says merge layers. You can also do that. So if you're hitting, you know, command E and, and nothing's happening, you don't see anything happening. You can just do this. So go to merge layers and check it out. The hairline just disappeared. So I know that's weird. Um, that again is a weird Photoshop thing. Don't stress about it because we just fixed it. And the way we know we fixed it is go ahead and zoom out, zoom in. Look, it's gone. See, there is no hairline at any depth of zoom. And the other way that we know it worked is now if you look in your layers panel, we only have one layer. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit here. So now we can see that we have one layer. It is a perfect square. And this is also a perfect repeat pattern tile but it's also really big, <laughs> which is fine. I mean, you may want it to be really big, but let's say you need this to be smaller. That is a really quick fix. All you have to do is go up to your Photoshop, very top menu, click on image, and now we are going to select image size. So now we're gonna be using not canvas size, but image size. And now we're gonna click on that and we're just gonna resize it just like you would any other image. Now, if you look at the inches here, originally, you know, we had this in pixels, but it's 8,334 8, pixels, or if you choose inches, it's like almost 28 inches. That's really big. Now, a lot of print on demand companies just want like a 12 inch by 12 inch square repeat pattern block. Um, same thing with a lot of art licensing partners, but we can change that now. So all you have to do is go to your image size and then type in whatever you want the image size to be. And as long as you have this little lock selected here, that is locking the width and height proportionally. So if you change your width to 12 inches, the height should automatically change to 12 inches as well because you have this lock selected. If you don't and you don't see those little, you know, line indicators there, just click on it and I think it just kind of reverted us, but that's fine. But just make sure that this is clicked right here on the left. And now we have a 12 inch by 12 inch perfect repeat pattern block. It's a square and it is a manageable size. I mean, you could make this any size you want. Let's say, I'm gonna go back here. If we go to image and we go to image size. So this is 28 by 28 inches. Here's a tip with any bitmap images not vector but if you're in photoshop you're using bitmap images don't ever size up if you make this larger it is going to get pixelated so you can always make it smaller but do not make it larger you will lose image quality and that's the beauty of ending up with a 28 almost by 28 inch file that you will get from my skillshare class on half drop patterns it's always better to have a bigger file than a smaller one because you can always shrink it really easily and quickly in Photoshop. So I'm just going to change this to 12 by 12 and I'm going to click on OK. And there we have it. So now we have a perfect repeat pattern tile or pattern block that is seamless. It is all on one layer. It is a perfect square and it is a manageable size. So this is going to be a lot easier to upload to print on demand websites. And also if you have an art licensing partner that wants a square, now you can do it. Make sure you check out my full Skillshare class on how to create beautiful, elaborate half drop patterns the quick and easy way. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel for more helpful tutorials for graphic artists, illustrators, and pattern designers. And just below this video in the description, I'm going to share a link to the full class on Skillshare, as well as a link for a Skillshare 30-day free trial. Thank you again, and I'll see you next time.
Bye.